In his situational awareness paper, Leopold Brenner described something he called the intelligence explosion. He was, of course, an ex OpenAI safety researcher. And his whole point was that AI, to have a massive impact on the world, didn't have to be able to do everything. It didn't have to be able to automate everything. Really, just one thing. And that one thing is AI research. If it could do research, if it could improve itself, that would result in the intelligence explosion, where rapid progress would start increasing exponentially. And today, not that long after that paper was published, we have this. It's by Sakana AI. It's the AI scientist towards fully automated, open-ended scientific discovery. And so they've been pretty busy with their AI research. They found ways to automatically merge the knowledge of multiple LLMs. They harnessed LLMs to discover new objective functions for tuning other LLMs. And through each of these, they were surprised by how good LLMs were at doing these complex tasks. So this led them to dream even bigger. Can they use foundation models, models like GPT-4, Gemini, etc., to automate the entire process of research itself? So currently we have a lot of AI models that are aiding scientists, right? They're brainstorming ideas, writing code, but they're still under a heavy amount of supervision. They're not out there autonomously completing tasks. They're more like aids. But today this company is presenting the AI scientist, the first comprehensive system for fully automatic scientific discovery, enabling foundation models such as LLMs, large language models, to perform research independently. So they've teamed up with Forrester Lab for AI research at the University of Oxford, as well as people at the University of British Columbia, and they've released the paper, The AI Scientist. So let's take a look at what they have created here and ask yourself the question, how close are we to having AI do fully autonomous research across various fields, whether it's AI itself or, or other scientific fields? The point is, is it getting closer to be able to move scientific discovery forward on its own without human supervision? So in this report, they propose and run a fully AI-driven system for automated scientific discovery applied to machine learning research. So this is, you're going to see a lot of this kind of in the realm of AI, of machine learning. So the AI scientist automates the entire research cycle from generating novel research ideas, writing any necessary code, and executing experiments to summarizing experimental results, visualizing them, and presenting its findings to a full scientific manuscript, in, in a full scientific manuscript. So it publishes the paper on it. They also, they also have an automated peer review process to write feedback and further improve results. It is capable of evaluating generated papers with near human accuracy. And what's maybe a little bit startling is that it's not that expensive. It's designed to be compute efficient. Each idea is implemented and developed into a full paper at a cost of approximately $15 per paper. That's shockingly cheap. They do mention that there's still some flaws, but overall, it seems like the experiment is a positive one. So a quick overview of, of the AI scientist, of what it actually is, how it works. Everything, of course, starts with idea generation. You start with generating ideas, plan, innovation, novelty check to make sure that this idea hasn't already been, doesn't have already a paper on it, seeing how new it is, and then sort of scoring it, trying to figure out how good it is, how bad it is, does it make sense to pursue it? They code via LM and Ader. Ader is an AI assistant coder, so they're using that to code. The experiment of executing the script, so they do experiments, update the plan, etc., get the various data, numerical data plots, etc. And once that whole thing is done, when they have like the experiment, the data, they write the actual paper by starting with a template, then by writing the actual text that goes in there, finalizing the manuscript, and putting it into the review, into the peer review. So this, if you ask a human scientist doing this sort of work to write out their sort of flow chart of what they do, it would probably be very, very similar. So the step one is this idea generation. So they do give, they're given a starting template and they, the AI sciences brainstorms a diverse set of novel research directions. LMs have been shown to be extremely good at this brainstorming capability. When tested against humans, they tend to create more ideas, you know, tirelessly, they don't get tired, they don't get less creative. They're constantly able to just pump out more ideas, usually far more than, than a human being could. Then they run the experiment to visualize the results, write the paper, and then they have the automated paper reviewing. And here are examples of actual papers generated by the AI scientist. 
diffusion modeling. So here's that paper. So as you can see, there's a watermark saying this was done by the AI scientist. I got some images here that they're doing. That they're doing. Uh, let me see if this abstract even makes sense. I mean, this reads very much like a human paper. It has all the references at the end. I mean, this this sh certainly would fool me. There are more papers about style fusion, adaptive learning rates for transformers via Q learning, unlocking grokking. And they mentioned here that while they've tried a number of different models, both proprietary and open source, so for example, they've used GPT-40 and Sonnet, but they've also used DeepSeq and Llama 3. So they're saying the proprietary models do produce the higher quality papers, but that certainly might change in the future where open models catch up and are better at this, which we've, we're seeing more and more of that. We're seeing more and more open source models get almost as good as the original GPT-4. They're certainly neck to neck with it, if not better in some cases. And of course, open source AI models in this case would mean almost free or, or very inexpensive research, something that can be run 24 hours a day. It would have greater transparency, flexibility, guaranteed availability, etc. They're saying that in the future, they aim to use the proposed discovery process to produce self-improving AI research in a closed loop system using open models. What's interesting to me is how closely this resembles the situational awareness paper. As Leopold Aschenbrenner says here, we don't need to automate everything, just AI research. And he's saying the level of AI researchers could go beyond human abilities by the end of 2027. So that's kind of his projection. Some people dismiss that as being too soon. That's too fast of a progress. But it's interesting that we're seeing actual sort of examples of something like this happening. We're not there yet. But you see people are working and they're seeing some decent results with it. We'll get back to their paper in a second, but I just wanted to point a couple of things here from the situational awareness paper, because he's pointing out that we'd be able to run millions of copies of these AI researchers, perhaps 100 million human research equivalents running day and night. With open models, the cost would be fairly low if you've got the compute for it. Maybe some of this could, this could even potentially be run maybe locally on local devices. And this is where, to me, it gets a little bit weird because some of the stuff that he's mentioned here at the time, we haven't really seen anything of like this in, in the wild, in the real world. But, you know, here's, here's saying that these AI scientists, they will be able to read every single machine learning paper ever written, have been able to deeply think about every single previous experiment ever run at the lab. They would be able to learn in parallel from each of their copies and rapidly accumulate the equivalent of millennia of experience. They would be able to develop far deeper intuitions about machine learning than any human. In this AI scientist paper, one thing they talk about is actually automated paper reviewing, an LM reviewer agent. So they've designed a GPT-40 based agent, so that's OpenAI, to conduct paper reviews based on certain existing review guidelines. They go through it, it has you know several scores on it, lists of weaknesses, strengths, and whether they kind of accept or reject this paper. So not only would they be able to read every single machine learning paper ever written, they may even be able to correct some of them to improve some of them. That database of machine learning papers that they have access to might become even more valuable as these automated AI researchers add their own notes in the margins, so to speak, maybe correct a few things, and just kind of streamline and connect that entire process. Here in the paper, they break down one of the papers, you know, published, produced by the AI scientist, and they're saying, overall, we judge the performance of the AI scientist to be about the level of an early stage machine learning researcher. You know, someone who can competently ex execute an idea, but may not have the full background knowledge to fully interpret the reasons behind an algo's success. And they're saying, look, many of these flaws that we have right now with the AI scientists, they will improve, if not be completely eliminated as foundation models continue to improve dramatically. And in conclusion, they're saying that the introduction of this project, the AI scientist, marks a significant step towards realizing the full potential of AI in scientific research. Ultimately, they envision a fully AI-driven scientific ecosystem, including not only AI-driven researchers, but also reviewers, area chairs, and entire conferences. Can you imagine that? They're also mentioning that we don't think that the role of human scientists will be diminished. They will sort of just move up the food chain, right, and do higher-end tasks. But a lot of the work in this sort of scientific ecosystem, this research ecosystem, will be handled fully by AI. Even the current iteration of this model 
has a strong ability to innovate on top of well-established ideas. So if, if you have a good, you have some ideas already, it's able to innovate and add things to it already as is. They're saying it's still an open question whether such systems can ultimately propose genuinely paradigm-shifting ideas. So will they ever be able to produce something that's truly earth-shattering, something that's brand new, something that completely changes how we perceive a certain area of science? Would they be able to come up with something as groundbreaking as the transformer architecture, for example, right? The thing that kicked off this whole AI boom and this AI wave, I believe is 2017, Google invented the transformer architecture. And a lot of the stuff that we see now is in some part driven by that massive breakthrough, that paradigm shifting idea, right? So it's still an open question. We still don't know if AI will get to the point where they're producing ideas of that caliber, but as is, they're able to innovate on top of human ideas. Like if we come up with an idea, they're able to optimize, improve, innovate on top of it. Certainly there's a lot of potential there. So back to the situation awareness, Leopold writes, imagine automated Alec Radford. So he's, this is a incredibly gifted prolific researcher slash engineer at OpenAI, and he's behind many of the most important advances, although his name is not that well known. They're saying, imagine 100 million automated versions of him. What if all of those were running at 10x or 100x human speed running day and night? Would it be possible to compress a decade of algorithmic progress into a year? certainly that seems very plausible. And he's saying it's strikingly plausible we go from AGI to super intelligence very quickly, perhaps in less than one year. And sort of on the chart, that's kind of like this line is kind of the AI improvement development, as we've seen from 2018 to let's say 2024, we're about here, right? So it went from preschooler level to elementary schooler, smart high schooler, right? So it's sort of improving, improving, improving. And somewhere, and this is theoretical, of course, but this is what we're kind of maybe potentially beginning to see with things like the AI scientist. Somewhere here, AI gets good enough to improve itself, to do AI research, to optimize its own algorithms. Not only that, but we've also seen NVIDIA proposing competition to have AI improve chips, the, the hardware that, that powers AI. Would it be able to improve how we design chips, the chip architecture. So assume that all of these things, or maybe just a handful of these things do come to pass, you know, within the next three to five years, certainly it seems like we would have this sort of inflection where the rate of AI progress would rapidly accelerate. If AI is already doing AI research, I mean, I'm sure we would call that AGI, right? It's at least as good as humans if it's doing, you know, research and moving the field forward. And of course, if you're able to clone that a million times, if you're able to run it night and day, if you're able to have each of its own improvements kind of be applied to itself, so it's sort of improving itself incrementally, how quickly do we go from AGI to super intelligence? You know, is it 20 years, 10 years, five years? Is it some incredibly short period of time just because of the, the speed of which this might develop? So it'll be very interesting to see where this goes and what other people will be producing similar AI scientists, AI researchers, since now it's seeming like it has the potential to work. I hope you enjoyed today's video. My name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.